I am Locutus of Borg. Resistance is futile. Your life as it has been is over. From this time forward, you will service us. Mr. Worf, fire. Episode 4 also feels kind of fillery, but not to the same degree that Episode 3 did. It actually starts out with a really cool storybook-esque sequence where Ratchet tells the story of Orion Pax, the Transformer that Optimus was before he became Optimus Prime. He was, of all things, a records clerk who didn't like how corrupt their government was becoming, and so he ended up siding with a gladiator-turned-politician named Megatronus, a name which was eventually shortened to Megatron. Megatron wanted to change the way that the government of the planet worked. There hadn't been a prime for an entire age, and he felt that it was time that they had one. And he felt that it should be him, and he was willing to use force if necessary to take the Matrix of Leadership and become a prime. And up until this point, he and Optimus had been on the same page, but Optimus didn't want to use violence. And so he opposed Megatron. And so while Megatron, feeling betrayed, called in his followers, the Decepticons, and began the Great War, Optimus journeyed to the center of the planet, where Primus lives, and received the Matrix of Leadership, becoming Optimus Prime, starting the war properly, and creating the fissure between these two mighty leaders. Immediately after he tells this story, we get a scene reminding us of something that I completely forgot to mention earlier in the summation, that at the end of the previous episode, before the party headed into Unicron's inner workings, Optimus handed something to Jack, the key to Vector Sigma. He lies about what it is to make it seem less important, but effectively it's a pass key to a mighty supercomputer on Cybertron. The same supercomputer which I assume we're supposed to assume is the one that calculated out the very prophecy that we heard at the top of the episode. This harkens back to something that Ratchet had said kind of offhandedly in an earlier conversation when the kids were asking about Optimus, that Optimus, before he was Optimus, was very much like Jack, implying that Jack has the potential to be a leader as great as Optimus one day. And it does seem that Optimus sees that same potential in Jack, and so left this incredibly important artifact with him, because, as Ratchet says, he doesn't plan on coming back, or at least he doesn't expect him the way he is now to return from this mission. There's a bit more filler here. There's a couple of scenes where Arachnid, who's currently in charge of the Nemesis, tries to pull a star scream and betray Megatron, but Soundwave smacks her down pretty good. Showing off for the first time how powerful he actually is, which I thought was really neat. And there's once again a lot of really repetitive fighting in this one as the party heads through Unicron's innards they're met with these flying drones, which are effectively Unicron's antibodies, or at least that's the comparison that they draw in the episode. But I don't know why they wouldn't just call them security drones. A giant robot would have security drones before antibodies, wouldn't he? And we get some scenes of different Autobot characters becoming kind of woozy because they're surrounded by Dark Energon and it's weakening them. And Unicron keeps, but even worse, Unicron keeps talking to Megatron, trying to exert his will upon Megatron and get Megatron to kill Optimus. And keep in mind why Megatron is doing this. He's only helping them because he wants the Earth and Unicron won't share it with him. But here, when Unicron tries to team up with him like Megatron suggested before, Megatron just outright rejects it. And sure, maybe his pride is so great that he won't accept a team up from somebody who rejected him even once. This is Unicron. He wants Unicron's power, and yet he doesn't even try to negotiate some kind of mutual partnership with Unicron. He just flat out resists Unicron's suggestions and overall control. And even though there are a couple of close calls, he of course doesn't kill Optimus and manages to get Optimus into Unicron's spark chamber, and Optimus is able to unleash 
the full force of the Matrix upon Unicron's spark chamber and put him into stasis? Wait a second. His spark's gone. That's not stasis. That means he's dead. When a Transformer goes into stasis, their spark doesn't disappear. In fact, if their spark disappears, they die. Again, I'll talk about that in a little while. It is now, though, and only now that Megatron decides to take his opportunity to kill Optimus. Optimus, in this moment, will be weakened. He's easy pickings. But then, the twist of all twists happens, and it turns out that when Optimus released the collective knowledge and wisdom of the Primes, that included his knowledge and wisdom. He's turned back into Orion Pax, and I guess the shock of losing all of that information has even reverted his mind to a point even before he knew that Megatron was a baddie. So now he thinks that they're allies again, and Megatron's able to take him back to the Nemesis with him. And that's pretty much where the episode leaves off. Optimus is with Megatron now. Well, not Optimus. Orion Pax. He's Orion Pax again. And this does mean that technically, while he doesn't look any different, he is weaker. It's not as if there are two Megatrons on the Decepticon side now, or anything. Still, this is obviously pretty bad, and a great cliffhanger to leave the season on. As you guys may have picked up throughout the course of my commentary on these episodes, there's a lot of stuff in these episodes that I don't like. At all. But there is plenty that I liked, too. It has been hinted throughout this entire first season, for example, that Unicron was going to be the final villain of this arc. This Dark Energon arc. Calling Dark Energon the blood of Unicron so many times, offhandedly the way that several characters did, saw to that foreshadowing. We've also gotten plenty of scenes and scenarios which showed us that Jack is a budding leader, that he does have the potential to become a great leader, that is, something that is a part of his character. And I did really like how these episodes start out like they're going to be just another regular outing for all these characters, like, oh, the Autobots have to stop the Decepticons from building another space bridge. Again, must be Tuesday. But then the story takes this sharp right turn into a battle against an almost literal god. It's a really cool way of using our expectations to make the episode feel a little more twisty than it actually is. The action in these episodes, even if it could get a little repetitive here and there, was still top notch. These last few episodes, even going back a couple episodes before this four part finale, have been really stepping up the action game a lot, noticeably a lot. And the animation was great. The characters seemed even a little more animated than they had in past episodes. In fact, the character models almost seem more detailed here than they have been in the past. I don't know if that's just me or they actually swapped the old character models for newer, more detailed ones, but I noticed details on the characters that I hadn't noticed before. And overall, the story of these episodes, it's engaging. It keeps you engaged and it's fast paced. Like, the first couple episodes of this four-part arc especially are really tight and fast-paced. Very well plotted. It only really slows down around episode three and then only for a little while comparatively. It was overall a really entertaining finale and I do like it. I do enjoy these four episodes but I have a lot of problems with them as well. First of all, I hate this version of Unicron. Like, it is cool. I will say it is cool to see a different interpretation of Unicron. For those who don't know, Unicron is a character from the original Transformers movie, an animated movie which came out in theaters back in the 80s. He was the size of a large moon and he ate planets as his fuel, I guess? I, I don't know. And just like he was in these episodes, he was defeated by the Matrix of Leadership. He is an established character in Transformers lore, which incidentally makes all the hints that he's going to be the villain of this arc from earlier in this season, even better if you're coming into this show as a pre-existing Transformers fan. And sure, seeing a new interpretation of a character that's that well known by the fandom can be really thrilling, but I just hate this version of the character so much. Like, I get that maybe fighting planet-sized monsters isn't really the kind of thing that the creators of this show wanted for their characters. It's a little silly just in concept, but choosing to make Unicron the core of the Earth is just dumb because it means we can never see Unicron in his entirety because if he emerges, he destroys the Earth. 
It's that simple. There's no two ways about it. And I can't prove it, but I suspect that the original plan was to kill Unicron here, but then they decided kind of at the last minute that they wanted to leave him in stasis instead in case they wanted to bring him back later for other stories, which they do. At least one other story, if I'm remembering correctly. Because they create the absolutely ludicrous excuse for keeping him alive that his life force is the source of life on Earth. But unless there's a Unicron in the core of our planet Earth here in the real world, I don't think that's true, guys. I think it's perfectly plausible that life can survive on Earth without a giant monster at its core. Not to mention that Unicron's life force is Dark Energon, and we just saw with Raph that Dark Energon is poisonous to the life on Earth. The idea that we need Unicron alive to remain alive is stupid. They do give another reason that destroying Unicron might screw with the magnetic poles, but here's a fun fact for you guys in case you didn't know. The magnetic poles actually shift pretty often considering how old the Earth is. And you know what? Never caused any problems. The magnetic poles don't really mean anything. If the magnetic poles shift, the only thing that will change is that magnetic north and magnetic south will be in different places. It's ludicrous. Every reason for leaving Unicron alive in the center of the planet is ludicrous. And the animation even seems to support that the intention was to kill him because like I said before, his spark's gone after the blast. He should be dead. There's also the issue of all of these characters traveling through Unicron's innards surrounded by Dark Energon and they only get a little woozy like some of the time. Whereas Optimus when he was fighting Megatron nearby to a volcano that was spewing some Dark Energon but significantly less than the amount that's around them when they're inside Unicron himself, weakened to the point that he couldn't fight anymore in just a few minutes. It just doesn't line up and while I can suspend disbelief I can accept that it's to service the story, it's just it's a little less consistent than I'd prefer that it be. There's also the issue that I mentioned previously that there's a lot of filler in here. We didn't need those scenes where Jack's mom takes Raph and tries to take Jack away from the Autobot base in a tizzy, only to be convinced to trust the Autobots and come back less than 10 minutes later. Like yeah, in that scene we see Jack make the choice to stay behind with the Autobots on the off chance that he can do something to help, defying his mom and showing how much he's grown, but we didn't need that scene. We know that he's the kind of person to make that kind of choice already. Overall, these episodes come across kind of like a summer blockbuster or something. The science-y stuff here is just techno babble to further the plot. You're not supposed to think too much about it. You're just supposed to enjoy the spectacle. And I can get behind that. There's a lot of that in this show. It's just these episodes, they try to be really smart. They try to tell a compelling story. And I feel like they fail almost as often as they succeed. But the worst part of it, the worst part of these episodes is the stupid prophecy. Like, pseudo-mysticism is something which permeates Transformers a lot. It was the absolute worst part of Transformers Beast Machines, for example, a show which was otherwise a pretty solid follow-up to Beast Wars. And I get the temptation to bring it in to this new Transformers continuity too. It feels like something that needs to be there. Like, a Transformers continuity without the pseudo-mysticism would be missing something. That doesn't change the fact that it's stupid. This prophecy is supposedly a prophecy made by ancient Transformers using an ultra-powerful supercomputer, and yet it's phrased like a frickin' poem, just like any fantasy prophecy. Why does it sound like something from Harry Potter when this is something drafted by a computer program? Wouldn't it have been really cool if the prophecy had sounded like a computer program? Like, maybe it's a computer program that's so old that they can't interpret it right anymore and so they have to guess at it. That would be really neat. That'd be a really neat twist on the prophecy genre. But between the fact that it's just a standard fantasy story prophecy that doesn't actually tell you anything meaningful at all, and the fact that the prophecy was never built up to prior to these episodes, and it just it sticks out like a sore thumb and I hate it. Every time I go back to rewatch these four episodes and it starts out with that stupid prophecy, I'm immediately turned off to the story that I'm about to watch. Obviously your mileage may vary, the prophecy thing might not bother you at all, and you may enjoy these episodes 
way more than I do. But I, unfortunately, even though I do find the episodes entertaining enough to watch, if I don't think about them too hard, do find these episodes to be kind of mediocre. And it's a bummer. And like, it's also pretty cool that we had gotten hints up to this point that Optimus and Megatron had some prior relationship above and beyond being hated rivals, building up to the obvious reveal of Orion Pax and Megatronus's relationship prior to the war that was revealed in these episodes. It does kind of bum me out that the story that we're told paints Megatron as a tyrant who was just pretending to be well-meaning. It's just, it's kind of a letdown. Wouldn't it have been so much cooler if Megatron's heart really was in the right place until he felt betrayed by Optimus and turned to darkness and let it corrupt him more and more over time? Wouldn't it have been really cool if there was actually a spark of goodness in him somewhere? Like a Darth Vader-esque kind of situation? But based on the story that Ratchet tells us, it doesn't seem like there is. Now maybe since the story was being told from Ratchet's perspective, he's a little biased and so it's not entirely accurate. Maybe there is some good in Megatron somewhere, but the rest of the series doesn't really line up with that and I feel like it's a huge missed opportunity. Still, this version of Megatron is deeper and more nuanced than any other version we've ever gotten, so that's nice, at least. That is something. I just feel like it could have been something more. Like Soundwave, for example. We know that he follows Megatron specifically because he believes in the stuff that Megatron used to preach, the better Cybertron that Megatron used to claim he wanted. To this day, Soundwave is devoted to Megatron because Megatron held those ideals, supposedly. If Megatron never actually held those ideals, though, then why is Soundwave still following him? I don't know, it's weird. It feels kind of like a waste. But then again, the story that they're able to tell at the start of the next season, because of the past relationship between Megatron and Optimus, and because of where this story left off is really good. I think honestly better than this entire finale was. So I guess at the end of the day, I can forgive it its faults. As per usual though, guys, I'd like to know what do you think of these episodes of Transformers Prime? If you have seen them, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22 and I will talk to you guys later.